Wargamers, welcome back, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron. I'm Tom. And we're here to talk about classic Battletech. This is part of our How to Play series. Uh, this one is on movement. Uh, we have a whole series of videos on, on pretty much every phase of the game uh, and some other cool things like how to take damage, so don't forget to subscribe. Um, but yeah, so, so let's talk a little bit about movement. So uh, the first thing, I guess, when I think about movement is movement points, right? MP, it's like the currency of the, of the phase. Um, every mech uh, has uh, MP on their record sheet, uh, and uh, it's, it comes in three flavors, walk, run, and jump. Uh, every mech can walk and run, um, but not every mech can jump. We're not all athletes. <laughs> You're not all athletes. You do have to have jump jets equipped on the mech to execute a jump move, which allows you to do things like move over terrain and stuff like that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Just be really stylish. Yeah. Right, yeah, some parkour yeah. if you want. Um, but yeah, so, so um, but, but MP is basically, you spend MP to, to move your mech on, on the field of battle, on the map, or the 3D uh, terrain that you're playing on, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, so all of your movement actions require MP to do. Um, so when you look on your mech sheet, you have like a base walk, we'll just say like a five. Yep. Right. And so with that, you can spend MP to walk forward and backwards turning costs MP and jumping costs MP. Right. Um, so every inch is one MP in our, um, you know, 3D uh, terrain style of play. Yep. Or if you're playing on a hex, every hex is one MP. Yeah, exactly. So it's, play. it's pretty easy to, to keep track of in your head. Right. And um, some things to keep in mind when you're moving, um, you know, of occupied hexes. So if you want to move through an occupied hex, um, it's okay if it's a friendly mech, but you cannot move through a enemy mech. Right. And you can never end your turn, or your movement, I should say, on top of another mech, friendly or enemy. Yeah. Regardless. Can't do it. Can't do it. They don't like it. Uh, mechs are big, they take up a lot of space. Yeah. Um, and so going back to your example with 5 MP, right? Yeah. So you could move in a straight line forward 5 hexes, or 5 inches, yeah. right? You could move you know, like three inches, turn one hex, and then move one more, right? Yep. So basically that's how it works. You just kind of count up the total MP. Um, and, and, you know, talking about turning, I guess the, the next important thing to talk about is facing. Uh, so in some war games, it does not matter uh, which direction your, your dudes are facing. Your vehicles can shoot out their butt. Uh, 360 they can headshot. <laughs> that's right, 360 no scope. Yeah. Uh, but in Battletech, it's super important yeah. Uh, because the mechs have weapons mounted on different locations, right? Their arms, their torsos, uh, they have rear-mounted weapons. Uh, and so where your mech ends its turn, right? So you move, you turn, you're looking a certain way. That's where it's looking, right? Now, there is an opportunity... And weapons, yeah. Yeah, there is an opportunity to torso twist. We'll talk about that in the shooting video. Um, and you can, yeah, move your arms around, right? But really, ultimately, you know, where you're facing at the end of the movement phase dictates... Uh, which weapons you're going to be able to fire at which targets, right? Because again, you've got these firing arcs and you can only fire in, in certain places. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a, that's a big concept. What, what else? Yeah, for sure. So now that you know your movement is expended and now you've figured out your facings and so you know your firing arcs on who you can hit. Right. So the next piece of the movement um, impact on the game is with the modifiers right. to your attacker right. and targeting numbers. Um, so in this game, you get um, a penalty. I would say it's almost always a penalty yeah. based on your always movement. Always a penalty in battle tech. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really don't get any benefits. Yeah. <laughs> so based on the movement mode um, right. that you select, you get a penalty to your firing. So standing still is zero. Yep. No penalty. No actually. penalty. No, no penalty. still no benefit, but no yeah. penalty. <laughs> and then um, it's a it's a plus one if you walk and a plus two if you ran and a plus three if you jumped, if you jumped. Yeah, yeah. right and a plus is a bad thing right because plus that, is a bad thing. It makes that it makes harder. it harder for you to hit right you exactly. add to that number yep yeah because yeah. yeah. and so so that's your two hit number goes up right and then um, the other one that gets modified is the targets modifier right so based on how far you moved so when somebody wants to target you with an with a weapon yeah um, that gets added to their um, to hit roll, right. and so that's based on actual distance move. Right. So there's ranges which are again are in a table, like everything Beautiful. else. 
There should be a drinking game. <laughs> How many times do we yeah. say table? Yeah. It's in the table. Like tables. <laughs> yeah. Be very drunk already. Right. right. And oh, so, and, and it's important though with the straight line thing, right? Because in the example where you have five MP, if you move in a straight line five, um, that's going to give you a certain bonus on your target modifier. Let's say you walked, right? So you always get one on the attacker mod because you walked, uh, but your your target mod would be would be two because you've moved five inches or five hexes, yes. right? So it would be less hard for you to shoot them than it is to be shot. Yeah, right? than it is to be shot. But if you move one hex, you turn, you move another hex, you turn, you move another hex, you've yeah. only moved three hexes or three yeah, inches MP, of yeah. forward movement, you're still going to get that one attacker mod for walking, but now your target mod goes down because you didn't move five hexes, right? Even though you still spent five MP, you only actually moved three hexes, right? Right, but what about in the case you move forward three and then move back two? That's a great point. So you can move backwards, but you can't run <laughs> backwards. <laughs> Freaking, <laughs> it is not cheating. No. Uh, you totally you, within the rules. You can't run yeah. backwards, right? But you can walk backwards, and you can walk forwards and backwards in the same just turn. Just to expend your... Just to, right. And also, if you want to, like, back up to, turn, move forward, especially faster mechs, you'll see it happening a lot. You know, back out from a building, you know, get down another alley, whatever. Yeah. Um, so All that adds up. It all adds up, but what happens is you don't add your backwards movement plus your forward movement. What happens is you look at w which direction did I move further in. So, like, if you back up two and move forward three, you take the three, and that's what you base your target mod off of. You're still walking, so that's easy to figure out, right? Yeah. So it's a one. Um, but that's a, that's a good point, yeah. So when you move forward and backwards, and maybe we'll do that in our gameplay segment. We'll show yeah, an example gets a little, of that. Little that can get, a little, can get a little complicated there. Quirky, complicated. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of moving back forwards and backwards, um, and the modifiers. Yeah. I guess the other thing that can suck down MP uh, is like terrain, right? Yeah. Um, so moving through forests or up hills or whatever, all this stuff costs, um, costs MP. And so it there, can be there, significant. It can be significant, right? And there, there's really, I think, like, I would think about three types of terrain, right? So the first one is clear, open terrain, right? Um, you know, and, and these don't have an impact the line of sight. They don't cost anything. It's just, you know, one MP to move into it, uh, and that's it. Um, and that can be roads as well, right? Yeah. Um, all these types of things. Uh, the second class of terrain is really where it impacts your movement points. Um, but does not really obstruct line of sight or anything like that. So these are things like rubble, um, you know, wreckage of mechs and things like that. It might be like uh, deep snow or ice. Uh, the last one is like forests, hills, um, buildings, yeah. rivers, right? So these things not only impact your ability to move, but they're also going to sort of obstruct line of sight one way or the other. Either you're partially hidden or your target is, right? So buildings... Um, there's like a whole chapter in the book yeah. on moving into buildings and then rolling randomly to determine how many basements the building has because you can fall into the basements. It gets nuts. The best um, rule is still about like pulling pieces off to use as bludgeoning oh, yeah, weapons. Absolutely. Ripping some awesome. burgers out. You can search the building <laughs> yeah. for, for you know improvised traps. weapons and traps. Uh, you always search the building for traps and secret doors. Yeah, yeah. Secret doors yeah. uh, I think we're mixing our games out here. But yeah. So buildings basically can be very complicated. Um, if you're an intro player or you're lazy like us, I mean, typically what you're going to do is just treat a building as impassable uh, terrain. It's sort of a line of sight blocker. You can jump up on it, but you, you know you can climb up on it if it's level two or less. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's really treated as impassable line of sight blocking terrain. Um, the the second, let's talk about um, forests. Uh, you know, so forests yeah, come in two one. flavors: light and heavy. Uh, this also applies to jungles. They're basically the same thing. Um, and so you move into a light forest, it costs one additional MP. So it's one to move forward, then another one, right? That tax on top, it still costs two in total. Heavy forest costs an additional two, so three in total. You move one into it, two, three, so that's how forests work. And they also can obstruct line of sight. Uh, yeah, because we'll they have a height. They do. Yeah. yeah, they do have a height, that's right, level two. Um, typically, you can make them higher or lower as you as you deem uh, fit, but the average or the, the sort of recommended is level two. Um, and then lastly, uh, hills and rivers, right? So uh, when you move up a, a, a hill, right, there's a level for that hill, for that next, you know, sort of that next level, right? And so on a hex map, you'll see it printed right on there, level one, level two, level three. Ground level's level zero. So for every level that you ascend, it costs an additional one MP. 
All right. So mechs can climb up to two levels at a time uh, vertically before they need to, you know. So uh, if you're going up and over one level, right, so into a, into a level one hex, that costs two MP, right? Yeah. Up one, over one. If you're going up and over a level two, that would cost three MP. You're going up two levels, right, and then moving into that new hex. Um, and so moving down is treated the same way, right? It's basically for every level change, it's an additional one MP. Um, rivers, same type of deal uh, with, a, with an additional caveat. So rivers are typically depth one or depth two. It's the same as like level minus one or level minus two, you can think of it that way. Yeah. You're going down, right? Uh, so level zeros here, river would be one level down. It costs one MP to go down that level. But anytime you're entering a hex with water, it's an additional one MP, much like light, light woods, right? Um, so if you moved into a depth one river, yep. right, one, one for moving down a level, one for entering the water, and one for moving forward, it would cost three MP in total, to just to just to move into, into just to move one hex or one inch into that depth one river. Yep. So it can get again, like you said, can really add up quickly. Uh, terrain can really bog a mech down. Uh, jump jets, you can choose to not pay any of those penalties. You can sort of leap over these things, assuming you have the, the, the right amount of MP to do so. Yeah. Um, there are some other ways you can avoid paying the tax, right? You can do what's called moving recklessly. Right. So moving recklessly is essentially, um, like let's, let's talk about going downhill, right? Yeah. So if I'm going downhill, let's say I'm going from a level one hill to level zero. Yeah, you don't, right. want, you don't want to pay that extra. I don't want to pay that penalty, right? I want to go further, yeah. right? I want to go faster. Pretty sure my mech can run down a hill, right? Yeah. <laughs> you might think that. Uh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so what happens is, right, certain pilots will handedly make that roll. Uh, other ones will fail. And, and so that, that just requires what's called a piloting skill roll yeah. or a PSR, right? PSR, yeah. Yeah, and so piloting checks, um, they come up a couple times in the game. Uh, but in the movement phase, uh, so if you fall, <clears throat> well, actually, let me rephrase it. If you risk falling, I'm, all, I'm, I'm used to falling, but so if you, if you risk falling, you have to roll a piloting check to see if your pilot is skilled enough to avoid um, missing. Right. And so um, you're, on your mech sheet, you'll have a base piloting uh, target number, usually a four or a five yep. for most uh, pilots. Yep. And uh, you roll 2d6 and uh, you try to um, meet or beat that number. Yep. And uh, there can be some modifiers to that roll. Um, there's a whole table you can look at um, based on your next damage or some other things that might yeah. be going on. Yeah, like actuators and all that gyroscope yeah, 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 damage. Yeah, like existing all that damage. Yep. 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 Um, and so after you know you make you either make the roll or you don't. If you make it, you continue your movement and complete it. Yeah. If you fail it though, you fall down. And then there's a whole um, checklist that you do when you fall. Yeah. Like everything in this game. Right. It's, uh, it's a series of a yeah. series of so, steps. Yeah. And, and so step one, uh, you check to see if your pilot takes damage. Right. Right off the bat, um, you roll another pilot and check with the same modifiers as the last roll. And um, if you don't make it, your pilot will take damage and uh, you know that's really not good right um, yeah. and then if you make it though you just uh, avoid the damage completely and move on to the next right. part which is determine the facing uh, of which way you fell right so um, you roll and there's a, t <coughs> another a table, table. Another, yeah, table. <laughs> another table and then there's a direction table and right. then you fall in that direction however far it tells you right. and then you take damage um, your your mech takes damage yeah that's based on the size of the mech. Uh, the bigger the mech, the, the harder it falls. Right. Yeah. And um, it's, it's uh, weight divided by 10. Correct. Right? right. It's weight divided by 10. So uh, you can see it can be substantial damage. Just yeah. Falling, and you have to roll for the location of the damage based on uh, which direction you fell. Yeah. So if you fell to the right, you would roll that location for the damage on the, um, the, the right, right side, side of the table. Yeah. yeah. The right yeah. side of the table. Yeah. And that's it. And so, so that's falling. Um, yeah, you can see you, you can take damage twice. Yeah, and every time you fall, this happens. There's there's no like oh you know right. Yeah, and and, and right and 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 to your point, like when you try to get up, which we'll talk about in a minute, you can yeah. fall again, right? And and so falling down is not a great thing uh, yeah. in most circumstances. Right. And once you're down, then you're prone. So, right. Yeah. Well, let's talk. Yeah, let's talk about prone for a minute. So, what does it mean uh, when when you're prone? Right. So you fall down, you're prone. Typically, it's like uh, fetal position crying. It, it's like that. Yeah. Um, although you can choose to go prone. Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, there might be, be a nap. You know, right. we talked about uh, the height of forests. Mechs also have a height that's level two, right? 
And so you might want to go prone to hide behind certain cover so that you're untargetable. So going prone is a thing that you can do in the movement phase at any point in your movement. Tactical You can just prone. go prone, tactical prone. And you TV. don't have to like take damage and all that stuff. Um, that's only if you fail a PSR, right? Yeah. So when you opt to go prone, it's a little different. But let's talk about when you are prone, right? So what happens? Well, again, the, the level of the mech changes, right? So that's going to affect who can see you uh, if you're in certain cover and things like that. Um, you can, uh, assuming you have movement points left or it's the beginning of the movement phase, you can change your facing, but you can't move out of that hex, that space that you're in. You're, no, you're stuck no there. No army walking. Right, no army crawling, none of that stuff. Uh, you, uh, you can't torso twist either. We'll talk about torso twisting in the shooting uh, video so in, no in a little bit. Dancing. No break dancing. Uh, you know, you're basically facing the way you're facing. That's why that facing role is so important. Um, because, you know, it's really going to dictate, you know, if you fall in the movement phase, it's going to dictate what you can see and it may, you know, kind of trash your whole your strategic plan there. So move recklessly with care. Move recklessly, cautiously. Do it at every opportunity and, and never say no. <laughs> never say no. Live your best um, life. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, um, so we talked about being seen, but also it's harder to be shot. Unless the target is right next to you, unless you're, I'm sorry, your attacker is right next to you, right? So if I'm standing, you know, right on top of my, you know, my target, right, and I'm and I'm adjacent to them, one hex away, one inch away, and I'm shooting, it's assassin mode. Yeah. It's assassin, right? Execution style. You, they're, it's very easy to hit them. Uh, but if I'm, you know, 300 meters away, it's going to be a little bit harder, you know, to to hit that mech. Um, and so, you know, I guess let's talk about standing up, right? So you can fall in just about any phase. You can fall yeah, in the shooting phase. Shot, yeah. You can fall in the physical attack phase from, you know, yeah. being kicked or missing a kick or so, several other things. Uh, you can fall in the uh, the heat phase. Like if you fail a shutdown roll, you you know, oh, you have right, to make yeah. a PSR. You could, you could fall. You can fall down in pretty much almost every phase. Yeah. You, Most of the time you fall in the movement phase. <laughs> and this is probably the shooting phase is a close second. So yeah. when you fall in the movement phase... If you still have movement left, yeah, MP, right, unspent MP, unspent MP, you can attempt to stand up. It costs two MP. You have to make a piloting skill roll, yeah. right? If there's that pre-existing damage like actuators, gyros, all that stuff still applies. Stack it on. Uh, yeah. If you succeed, you get up. And to your point earlier, if you fail, you go through that whole checklist again. And you can retake pilot. damage, retake pilot damage. Re yeah. Fall so, a different direction. Fall a different direction. It's like a, it's like a circus. Yeah. Just mechs falling everywhere. It can be pretty ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it can be, uh, especially when you're terrible at rolling piloting skill rolls. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, basically, though, you can get up. And, and so uh, you could actually, in our example, where I, I move recklessly down that hill, that's the first thing I do in the turn. And let's yeah. say I'm a, you know, pretty yeah. fast mech. Maybe I got five or six MP. You know, oops, I fall. I've spent one. Yep. Right? And then you spent two to now get I up. I spent two to get up. I got three left, two or three left, depending on what, you know. Yeah. You can keep moving. Yeah. And, the, and you... And that's important, right? So if, if you're in a walk mode and you have a bunch of MP, you can try to get up as many times as you want until you're out of MP in that uh, movement phase. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and every time you try to get up, if you're successful, the other tactical thing about that is you can choose which facing right. when you stand up. Any facing you want. Yeah, so even if you fell directly on your face, um, when you stand up, you could be standing up facing the complete opposite direction. You get that yeah. free movement on yeah. um, this part of it. So yeah, it gives you, a you can advantage. salvage. Yeah, you can salvage something. Some sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. You can duck behind cover and things like yeah. that for sure. Yeah, and it makes a big difference. Uh, and a, another another little quirk of that is uh, so say that you you fell in a previous phase and now it's the movement phase and you start your movement prone. You can you have to actually I yep. guess de um, uh, declare if you're walking or running before you attempt to get up. That's so important. that affects how much MP you have to spend while trying to get up. And then once you're up, things you can do. So if you declare that you're running, you have a lot more MP to spend, but you couldn't walk backwards after standing up. Exactly, so, right, um, right. Yeah. You build a lot more heat and all these Yeah, and things, you're taking yeah. the modifier to your attacker. Exactly. And so. Yeah, and you're probably not gonna move as far because you're spending two to get up. So yeah, it's an interesting trade-off. It's a, it's a great a tactical point uh, on on standing up and, and TP. You know, a, TP. A, lot TP. a lot of TP in this. <laughs> a lot of TP in this video. <laughs> uh, so we've got uh, we've got I think all the basics covered. We hit you know movement points, what you can do with them. We hit terrain, 
yeah. piloting skills, falling down, talked about being prone, uh, reckless movement, all of our fun stuff. Moving into and out of hot tubs. Uh, did we level did we, two? Did we hit on? I think it's a level two level, change. Level two, depth two. Yeah, depth river. two river. Yeah. But you have to have you have to have uh, jump jets, I think, to make the bubbles. <laughs> Well, on that note, I thought this through a lot. make sure you subscribe uh, to Tom's Mad Ravings. Uh, click below. Thank you again for watching. We hope you found this video entertaining and informative. Uh, and don't forget, stick around. We've got a gameplay segment coming up. Uh, we'll go over you know all these different things, jumping and, and rivers. Visual and, learners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll pay off. It'll pay off. Pay dividends. So thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you soon.